Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. So I made some tassels, some Christmas tassels. Um, and I wanted to make uh, another couple and I thought I'll do it on camera. And then once I've done a tassel and you sort of see the process and how I put them together, I will also show you ways of attaching tassels to your journals and some different um, sort of types of tassels and ways that you can attach them. So as you see over here, I have a box of threads, ribbons, lace, all sorts of stuff. So, you know, it's within the theme of, you know, it's a Christmas theme, um, but this can apply to any tassel that you make. You can do a vintage theme. So um, I've got the threads and stuff in here. I've got some bits and pieces like little charms and little bells and uh, just a couple of nice beads. These little bells, I'm not sure what they're called. Some findings, all sorts of little bits and pieces. And then over here, I also have some more beads if I need to put, you know, more beads. And that's pretty much all that we're going to need. Um, I'm pretty sure that most of you have one of these at home. So just little bits and pieces of things. So I tried to pull things out of here, like even this one. I don't know how long it is. It's not long enough. Oh, it might be. But, you know... I tried to pull things out of here rather than um, going through all of my other stuff. So I just wanted to use things up. This is really cool. This can be a cool thing for um, Christmas journals. All right, so I'm going to put this away and let us begin on creating the tassel. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one of these um i don't know correct names for things but it's a, it's a little loop it can be opened but i don't need to open it because i'm going to thread my um bits and pieces through it and then tie it up so i've got that ready and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to choose things that i want to put in my tassel so like for example this I might do this white one. I think I want to have maybe a little bit of lace. Okay, so the next thing I might choose is, um, because we're doing a Christmas theme, maybe something like this. That will look nice. Um, then I want maybe a little bit of red. So what do I have here? I have this one. That looks cool. And see like this, when you look at it like that, it doesn't look very useful because it's all bent up and everything. But we can use that in our tassels for sure. And especially if you, when you attach beads onto, onto it, um, the weight of the beads is going to um, straighten it. Okay, so I want red. Okay. And then, of course, I would like a little bit of green. So what do I have over here? Maybe I can use... Um, this is actually embroidery floss, but it's like, um, like a really shiny Christmassy green. So the only thing I'm concerned about is it looks like it very easily unravels. So I'm just going to check how that's going to look. I'm going to use it. I think it's going to be fine once I, I I will knot the bottom. So I think I need more green and I just found the perfect. This one's, uh, it's not showing up on camera, but it's got a bit of gold in there. So I think that will look cool. Put that back in my box. So I think I'm pretty happy with this. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'll put these, all of them together. Okay, so I've got them all together on one end here. And then I will simply try and loop it through the jump ring. I think it's called the jump ring. And they just, all of them have to go through. And now I decide how long I want my tassel to be. 
so you have to take into consideration that you'll be tying knots at the end so you might want it to be slightly longer then you know you can always cut it down but you can't make it longer so I like to at the beginning just have them a bit longer than I think I will need okay so now that that's done I want to secure this so the way that I do that I've got my loop this is where the loop opens right over here so I like that to be inside like this okay and now the next thing I want to do is choose a corresponding thread so maybe something like this okay so I've got my just a little piece of some sort of a thread and then what I do is I hold everything in place if you want to arrange like if you want to have something in particular sit on top make sure that you have it on top at this stage okay so now I will put it somewhere around here right at the top I'm holding it down with my thumb and then I just wrap around really tightly as tight as I can um, I think three times I've wrapped it around and then I tie a square knot so I do I know this is difficult to see so I'll just talk through it uh, um, most of you know what a square knot is anyway so I did left over right and now I'm going to do right over left and just tie a knot and then I want to cut trim these bits a little bit shorter okay so now that I've done that I want to trim these long bits that I don't need so trim this one here this one trim the lace okay so we've got the threads on there and now we need to decorate the threads so as you will see let me just show you for example here some of the threads I've left uh, shorter here and then I have some long ones so you can always as you're decorating them you can always choose and you know what you will leave shorter and what you will keep longer so some of the things that we can do um, I'm going to do this one first because it's unraveling so now I'm just going to look through what I've got over here so because this is quite thin I need to have a bead that's on the thinner side I don't need, I don't want anything that's got a huge um, middle because it, will, it won't stay on no matter how many knots I tie so I will go into my beads box this is one off my beads boxes I have plenty and maybe on this green I want to use something like this um, a gold bead so this is unraveling I can always put a little bit of glue in there but I just want to make myself suffer just for a little bit see if I can do it okay so maybe I can do like let's see okay I ended up applying just a little bit of glue on the end here it's not dry so I'll just be really careful and I chose this uh, green bead so I think I'm just going to do one um, gold and then one green and then one gold and then maybe I can do something like this to finish it off down the bottom okay so I'm just gonna leave that as as it is so I think I want this to be approximately around there so you choose you know where you want your beads to start so I'm just going to tie this up and once I tie it up it will no longer unravel and of course the knot has to be larger than 
the hole on the bead so you don't want the bead to fall through so I always test it that's pretty good and now I think I might trim a little bit okay so one is done and I think I will uh, go ahead and do pretty much the same thing on the other side okay so for the other side I chose a red bead and now I just want to check before I tie the knot I don't want them to be at the same level so I'm just going to push this one up a little bit more and then tie my knot my double knot okay so now as you can see I've got one over here and I've got one on the other side and they're not at the same level so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to leave these gold ones as they are I'm not going to put any beads on them I think maybe just for fun on this lace I might want to attach maybe a little bell or something like that just to make it a little bit more Christmas themed so maybe I can do this little bell. Uh, this actually is from Christmas baubles. I think that's what they're called. So um, the ones that sort of unglued and fell off and I just keep these bits and they look like little bells. So in order for me to attach this little bell onto this lace, I need a little um, jump ring so I'm just gonna go in here and find one okay so I wanted a gold one and here we go maybe I can use my tools because it doesn't open that as easily as I thought it might so you just open it to the side and then I put my bell through fiddly work this is okay and then where do I want it maybe up here somewhere and then I just lace it um, thread it through my lace and then just close it and now I have a bell on my lace so maybe I'll just do the one bell I'll see how I go as as we're progressing I'll be able to sort of see what else I need so now this one that's doing this um, is getting on my nerves so what I need on this one is a heavy bead um, and I've got this or maybe I can use something like this let's see how would I yes I know what I'll do so I'm going to for this I'm going to use because it's quite thick can't go through so I'm just going to use another jump ring these jump rings that I've got most of them I would get from old necklaces and stuff like that so you can you don't have to go and buy spe specific you, know, you don't have to go to a jewelry store to buy specific things you know jump rings and things like that you can just go and read your old necklaces and bits and pieces that I'm sure you've got so now um what I would like to do is maybe I can just tie a knot here and then trim. Yes, that's what I'll do. So I'm just going to tie a knot. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm, I'll try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'm just going to untie it and, and do it again. So I'm just going to leave it as that. Okay, so now I have a little bell down the bottom here. And now for this one... I will do something different so maybe because it's doing that I'm going to have some beads here and then I'll just trim that off so I had to go on a hunt because I wanted a, a green bead so um, I might do one gold one green and the only reason why I'm adding gold is because this has a very wide hole so and this one has a smaller hole so it'll be um, easier to keep it in place once I tie the knot gold green and I'll finish off 
with a gold one I've got glue on my fingers okay and I will have that right there somewhere on the top so I can I'm going to tie a knot here and I think in this case just one knot will do that's fine and now I want to trim this off okay coming along nicely so now I want to decide there's some more threads here and now I'm going to add some more beads so I might um, just speed up this whole process we'll see how we go so I just wanted to show you this one for this one I I added some little gold beads and then a larger gold bead and then I tied a knot and I'm going to do the same down here and tie a knot here so on the one string I will have two sections okay so that one's done that one's got two sections one up here one down here looks like that pretty cool I think I've just got these green ones to do and the white ones on the green one I decided to add some of these red wooden beads that I've got um, together with the gold because that looks like a really good combination green thread and gold and red beads I think that looks pretty cool okay so now um, I have just a couple of threads left so I think I'm just going to leave that one I mean we don't have to have something on every single one I think I want something on these white ones especially this one because it looks a bit sorry for itself okay so for the white ones I just chose a simple red bead it's a wooden uh, they're two different red wooden beads I don't know if this one's wooden it feels heavy and now let's have a look so I've got a little belt there and now I don't know I, I think I'm happy with this so I might just trim some ends and when I actually attach it to a journal if it's too long I can always trim more so I can trim these I can trim the lace I think I'm going to leave the lace just with the one bell I think I like that my daughter just called me so I had to stop okay so I'm happy as with this as it is I am going to leave it so now we're going to the fun part of attaching these to our journals so I just want to put these together side to side just for a little bit of eye candy how much fun does that look I can keep going all day okay so um, anyway now I'm going to just talk about a few different ways of applying these to your journals um, it's pretty self-explanatory but I have I just quickly wrote this list I hope that you can read it um, so let's start with the first one paper clip it so we need a paper clip where's a paper clip let's get a paper clip simple paper clip so I'll just move that out of the way um, you put this onto the paper clip your loop that you've got and now it's secured on there and then you I'm just going to use my faux cover this is not you know I just want to use it for demonstration purposes so I might have to do it this way um, depending on how thick it is but if it's not too thick you can just paper clip it on just like that and that's so you can see obviously that this is too long if this was to be a journal it's too long so you would need a smaller paper clip or you would need to trim down the tassel or keep that in mind when you're making a tassel so as an example I actually have this journal I, sh I did show it before uh, I'm just going to try and move the camera up a little bit okay so just so I can uh, show you a little bit better this journal is um, uh, it's an art journal so it's full of amazing goodies but you will see here that I have a few different things going on and there's actually a paper clip um, little I guess I don't know what you would call it charm tassel I guess so uh, it's all on a button I put it all in a button and then on a paper clip and then it's attached to the journal and this is actually quite a thick cardboard so um, you can see that the 
paper clip is a little bit out of, out of shape but it's still there and it's removable so that's also a positive i guess okay so another one that i've got here is tim holtz rings um i don't actually have one but they're very easy to use it's a brad that you put through the cover and then it's got a ring on it and you can attach anything to it so i don't actually have one to demonstrate so let's move on to the next one which is the bulldog clip i think that's the correct name for it so it's um one of these so um i'm gonna use this even though the the gold looks better i'm just going to use this one because it's smaller and it's red but silver here which i don't particularly like um so what you do is you just remove it should i show you how to so you just remove it like this right if you didn't know i'm sure you did but if you didn't and then you attach your tassel and then you put it back so you put back one end and then you put back the other end and then you put it on your journal like this and then you move the clips down and that's also a good way to attach a tassel that you can remove and you can move from journal to journal especially if you're making one that's not Christmas themed then you want to use uh, I don't know for your journals as you know you want to move them from journal to journal okay so that's another way bulldog clip um crocodile clips is the next one so they are also um jewelry findings that's these little things here uh, i think they're called crocodile something or other crocodile mouth something like that so i've actually used these for closures i would attach a ribbon there and then um, put it on my book but in this case what we would do is because it's got a tiny tiny little hole up the top here we need to uh, attach a jump ring so I'm gonna go and get a jump ring and I'll come back and then we'll go oh here we go there's a jump oh. okay here's a jump ring opened it just so I can demonstrate a bit quicker and then we put that through we'll loop it through and then we take our tassel we'll loop it through we close the jump ring and now you've got this end the crocodile mouth um, I'll try and do uh, a google image search and see maybe they're not called crocodile mouths if I find a different name for them I will write uh, the name in the description down below so just in case if I got the name wrong and then you put it onto your spine you can even put it onto your cover like this if you want if you had a shorter tassel or something you can put it anywhere you want really and then you just squeeze it shut and it's got these little sharp teeth and they don't go anywhere once you squeeze it shut it's not going to go anywhere it will stay attached to your cover and the good thing is with most of these that i've just shown is you can move it uh, away so you don't want the tassel i guess that's i think one of the reason why i'm not a fan of those tim holtz rings um, is because i don't know if you can actually move it out of the way because if you've got this thick tassel here and then you're trying to write in your journal it's in the way especially with the beads so i like something that can be flipped up out of the way when you're writing in your journal okay so that's one um picture frame hooks not picture frames picture frame hooks and that's these and i uh, i love this i absolutely love it so the way that you do it is You've got your cover and then I've already got a hole there but you don't need to. So you attach this with a brad. Okay so there's a brad. So you attach it for example somewhere near the top. okay so let's pretend that's attached i didn't actually close it down because i don't want to waste the brand but so now you've got this you can clip anything you want onto it right so um 
So let's say you've got a loop. Um, so how you would attach the loop is you can open it up. Remember this one opens up so you can open it up and attach it onto there or you can add a second little jump ring and then attach it like this. And let's pretend that's attached like that. And then that still can be moved out of way when you're journaling. Okay, these uh, picture frame hooks, they're very, very cheap. You can get them from $2 shops. A whole bunch, like a whole bag of them. Um, they're very cheap and very versatile in, in journal making. So go and get some. Okay, what else have I got here? Uh, loop through a hole on the spine. We'll come back to this one. Let's do safety pin. Um, safety pin or one of those, um, what are they called? One of these garment pins or bulb pins, I think. So what you need is you need a hole on the spine. So you can poke a hole. You can punch a hole. You can just make sure you somehow get a hole in there. And then you close it shut and now you this this can be glued if you don't want it to be able to open it can be glued down and then you just slide it in there like that and you attach your tassel onto that not my favorite method because it kind of doesn't sit flat but you know it's just a way that you can do it so it's still i mean you might want to attach your tassel onto it first like so let's see very um, quick and easy and simple way of attaching uh, of attaching a tassel and it's still the tassel will still hold it down and you can still sort of move it out, out of the way when you're journaling okay so we've got the um, the safety pin and now let's go on to the fan tassel um, I have a video on this. I'm going to link it, link it down below. And basically what this is, is an old fan, um, you know, fan. Yes, I pulled it apart and then I just painted it gold and then I just attached stuff to it. So the way that you would use this is um, you put it, you don't attach it to the spine. Let's just get this journal back up for demonstration purposes. It's not attached to the spine. It's more like a bookmark. So it can be moved around anywhere or you can just keep it in the middle and your your tassel is attached so that's pretty cool too because it's just a different way of doing things and it can be moved around and it's pretty cool in my opinion anyway um, i love my fan tassels i'm going to link that video down below it's a tutorial that i did okay and the last one is a little bit different so this last one loop through hole on spine this is actually a lot of I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this correctly, but Johanna, jo Johanna Cloth, I think that's how her name is pronounced. I have seen her doing it this way. So uh, it might even be her own invented method. I'm not sure. But the way that you would do, instead of looping it onto um, a, what's it called again? one of these loops, whatever the name is, it's escaped me now, you would uh, punch a hole through the journal, through the spine, um, and then you can add an eyelet. You can add an eyelet anyway with any of these um, ways of doing things. Actually, I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to punch because this hole I don't think will be big enough. So let's say I want to punch, I'm going to punch a hole here. I would definitely secure that with an eyelet. I've done plenty of journals this way, but I haven't actually got one to show you. So, and then what you would do is just gather your threads that you want to use. I don't know. Just as an example, just want to show you. So this is just an example. So you've got your threads you want to use. You put them all together, just like we did for the ones that I did on camera. You put them all together and instead of looping them through a jump ring, that's what it's called, you actually loop it directly into the cover, uh, the spine, I should say. Okay, so now that's looped through. This is where you check all your lengths and all of that sort of jazz. And then what you do is you tie a knot. You don't tie a knot up here because you want to be able to move this up and down like so. You tie a knot.
Okay, so now we've tied a knot. This is a really, um, really messy, huge knot that I did, but I want to be able to untie it, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So just for demonstration purposes, you loop it through, you tie a knot. This can be moved up and down out of the way, but it is attached to the spine. It's not going to go anywhere. You can't take it off because the next step is going to be the decorating part. So this is when, once it's attached to the spine, you start adding your beads and your bells and your bits and pieces that you will be adding. So um, that is the loop through hole on spine method. My names aren't the best, but these are just, I'm sure that there's plenty of other ways to do it. I just quickly jotted this down before I started filming because I thought um, I'm going to forget some of the ways. I'm sure there's plenty more. These are some of the ways that I have used in the past. Um, so, yes, this is something that you can play around with. Uh, it, uh, you know, you can use it for themed journals. You can do... Uh, I mean, the possibilities with most of these things that we do are endless, but, you know, for vintage journals, for little gifts, for things like that, even tassels that you might want to attach onto a bag, um, not something like this, obviously, on a bag, but like something like this, you know, you can uh, let your imagination run wild and, and have fun with it. So I hope that you enjoyed this little craft with me slash tutorial let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and thank you for being here and i'll see you in my next video bye